In this problem, we have a bullet that's traveling with an initial velocity v1 of 400 meters per second that impacts the rod shown here, the thin rod with a mass and length given. We're told this is a perfectly plastic impact and asked for the angular velocity of the rod immediately after the impact. Now a plastic impact implies that the two bodies, they meld together and they move together. So we'll have the bullet embedded into the rod and they move as one object. It's important to note that energy is not conserved over a plastic impact. So we couldn't use conservation of energy to solve this problem. We're gonna draw our two states. So state one is just before impact. In this case, we have our rod. It has an initial angular velocity of zero. It's not moving. It has no linear velocity either. And we have our bullet, which is almost impacting. And it has an initial angular velocity. In terms of forces, we have reaction forces at the pin, and of course we have weights. Our bullet is so close to impact and it's so small that we essentially think there's zero distance there. And we'll just put that these are reaction forces at state one. And then if we draw state two, we're gonna have the same rod. Now the bullet is embedded in the rod and it's part of the rod. And this rod and bullet together have some omega two that's not equal to zero. And there are still reaction forces here. They may be different reaction forces. And there's gonna be some overall m total times g. Now the nice thing about angular momentum is that if we take our sum of moments about O, we can see that the reaction forces has no moment arm. The weight has no moment arm. Again, we're saying this one is so close to the rod, that distance, the moment arm is essentially zero. And we have no other moments acting on our system. So we can say that angular momentum is conserved for the system between state one and state two. That is only true about O. If we take our sum of moments about any other point, angular momentum is not conserved necessarily. Also, if we consider just one object, angular momentum is not conserved because there's an impact force that is happening between the two objects. But when we consider the thing as a system, then that huge impact force is internal to the system. We only care about external forces when we do our sum of moments. So we can say that over the system, the angular momentum about O at state one is the same as the angular momentum about O at state two. So if we consider state one, we can say that the sum of angular momentum about O for state one of the system is gonna be the angular momentum about O at state one of the bullet plus the angular momentum about O at state one for the rod. The rod is not moving. So it has no angular momentum. 
the bullet, it's actually traveling in a linear path, but we can calculate the angular momentum for that object. So our angular momentum, state one point uh, for B, is going to be from our equations, the um, mass moment of inertia about G of that object of the bullet times omega of the bullet plus R G with respect to O. That's gonna be this distance. crossed with M V G of the bullet. Because this bullet is so small, we're considering it a point mass, it has no mass moment of inertia about its own center of gravity because it's a point mass. It has no extent. It's also not rotating, so it's also zero. So the first term gets canceled. But the second term here that is due to us taking our sum of uh, moments or sum of angular momentum about a point that's not this object center of gravity, this term isn't zero. R G with respect to O is gonna be equal to H in the negative J hat direction. V G of the bullet is V in the I hat direction. And so we can say that the angular momentum at state one of the bullet about point O is the mass of the bullet H V in the K hat direction minus J cross I is positive K hat. And that is going to be equal to the sum over the system of the angular momentum about O for state one. For state two, now we've got these two objects melded together, moving together. So we can similarly say sum over the system of angular momentum about O for state two is gonna be the angular momentum about O at state two for the bullet plus the angular momentum about O at state two for the rod. Neither of these are zero anymore. We can say for the bullet, that's I O for the bullet, omega two, because this is an object that's rotating about a pin. This is a pin point. So we can use our simplified expression for our uh, angular momentum. And that's going to be I O for the bullet is going to be I G for the bullet plus M H squared is the distance. Once again, I G for the bullet is zero because it's a point mass. And then we'll have omega two. And we can write that out. That's going to be M of the bullet H squared omega two in the K hat direction. And then we can write the angular momentum about O at state two for the rod is gonna be similarly I O of the rod, omega two. We know for a rod at its end here at O, we can write that's one third mass of the rod, L squared, omega two. Or we can write that as omega two, the scalar in the K hat direction. We could alternately do this uh, finding the total mass moment of inertia of the rod plus the bullet and using a similar uh, equation. So now we want to write that the sum of angular momentum about O at state one for the system equals the sum of angular momentum about O at state two for the system. So conservation of angular momentum. And what we get is M B H V. So the mass of the bullet times H times the velocity of the bullet equals M B H squared omega two plus one third mass of the rod length of the rod squared omega two. This was all in the K hat so we K 
cancels out those k vectors. Note that if these are moving together, they have the same omega 2 in state 2. And we can solve for omega 2, which is what we're looking for. What is the angular velocity after the impact? That's going to be mass of the bullet, h v over mass of the bullet, h squared, plus one third mass of the rod, l squared. We're going to fill in those numbers, 0 0.025 kilograms is the mass of the bullet, 0 0.6 meters is h, 400 meters per second for the velocity of the bullet. And then we've got 0 0.025 kilos again times 0 0.6 meters all squared plus one third times 3.3 kilograms times 0 0.8 meters all squared and we'll find that omega 2 equals 8.415 radians per second or we'll write that in vector form the vector omega 2 equals 8.415 radians per second in the k-hat direction. Thanks for watching this video. Find more videos and material at Mechanics Map.